Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm good. Hot. Oh, it's, God, isn't it lovely? Amazing weather. Yes. Yeah. Long Summer making. has arrived. Uh, let's hope it continues, shall we? Yes. So, let's hope so, so. Lovely, lovely to see you. How, is, how has lockdown been? Oh, um, you have the highs and lows, I guess, don't you, of um, that experience where you, where you get to do things that you never would normally do, um, which some of it is just absolutely wonderful. Um, uh, and, and certainly get to do things that, and have a bit more time to spend with the family, to cook, to garden, to go out for walks, enjoy the nature, not see aeroplanes all over the sky and cars all over the road. I mean, it's just, just one that's in a lifetime, and hopefully it's once in a lifetime experience. Um, and, um, and seeing the team all rally together virtually and getting used to the um, working from home every day. Um, uh, and, and then of course, you know, it's the, it's the craziness of um, the, the, the work that we've been trying to do in all the different sectors in how do, how do we keep everybody safe and our customers safe and, and looking after our people during that, that period of time. Um, in, 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 in schools continuing, in much of our manufacturing base continuing, our healthcare operations being absolutely crazy, doing the Nightingale, all of that craziness and dealing with cost recovery and now looking to the waves of hopefully unlock and yeah. then what does the future look like and and you know for the first I don't know it was six weeks uh, since lockdown it was it was a crazy time and not really getting that chance to look up and, ex and, and reflect and experience and, and and now actually I think we're we're, we're in a, in a place where we probably all need a rest. I think my team have been just working as hard as they've ever been. Everyone needs a bit of a break. Summer, let's, let's take a breather because we'll go again. And then, you know, hopefully the world will really start to ramp up through the autumn. You know, God forbid we have um, no more big second waves and that if there are spikes, they're localised and then we can start getting back to normal and the scientists can do their bit. And, um, come up with treatments and vaccines and, and we see what the future holds in a, in a, in a, in a positive and optimistic way. Cause I think there is a good reason to be positive yeah, think, and optimistic. I think, we, I think we've noticed a much more positive dialogue beginning to emerge now as people can see the ends come. Yeah. It's a long tunnel, isn't it? And, um, and, and sometimes you, you look at the end of the tunnel and you see another tunnel and you, and you don't want to go down that one. So, so we keep optimistic and we look at the end of the tunnel and say, actually, there is, some, there is some light there. Let's look at that and let's focus on it and how do we get there and, and, and work through what will be difficult times um, over the next few months to, yeah. to, 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 to a better time in the, in the not too distant future. And I do think food service is going to play a, a bigger role as people try and re-engage, come back to life. I think that's you, going to be really important. You, you'd hope so. I mean, of course, you know, we've all been on these webinars and we've all heard and you sort of put them into the, are you a pessimist, the death of the office and everybody's working from home brilliantly and the digital technology is enabling culture to sort of thrive within, within, within a home environment. Um, and therefore, let's just get rid of our workplaces. Why would we need them? And then you've got the optimist that says, actually, this is the rebirth. This is a this is a repurpose and a reimagined uh, workplace. You might not do as much work at the workplace. It might well be the place that we go to socialise and to connect and to be creative and to collaborate and to be human and see colleagues. And there'll be much more social or informal interaction as much as formal meetings and, 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 and get togethers and collaboration. And of course, if that's the case, then food really does play quite an important role in that, both in terms of the welcome back and, and how we make sure that people feel that connection through food and feel safe and happy to be there. And then I think as we move forward, it's the, when we, when we come to the office, have a reason to be there, have a reason, to take that commute, have a reason to get up that little bit earlier in the morning. Um, and I think food can play a really big part in that. Um, certainly that's the way we think in, in ISS. I think that's, well, that's the, the, I think that's the feedback we're, we're getting from companies is actually they think food service is going to have to play quite a key role to get people on that public transport piece. And I think yeah. the cities are the bigger threat, the ones under threat more than the regions. Actually. And there, there is, you know, there's, 
there's going to be um, other priorities for organisations and, and, and obviously we, we we're expecting a, a deep recession and what that brings and that means that whatever we do, you know, we need to make sure that it is uh, viable um, yep. and, we, and we know that. Um, and, uh, you know, I heard one of your other speakers talk about um, their, their approach and we're sort of taking a similar thing. So we're sort of saying, look, let's, we have to simplify what we do particularly short term, we can build back up, but we've got to make it simple, but it has to be elegant. It has to have an experience with it because when you do go into an office and you've gone through that anxiety of being in work and what you don't want is a click and collect that doesn't work or what you don't want is the food that you've craved somebody else cooking for you to let you down, what you want it to be. It's a really good experience. So we want to make it simple, but elegant, make it really right. And then it has to be relevant. So we have to make sure that we're aligned to the values that we're now coming out from lockdown with, whether it's, you know, the changing consumer habits and we all want to eat British and sustainable. We all want to eat healthy, but have really great food cooked for us. Um, so there's lots of reasons to want to make sure you get it absolutely right. And then you build from there. But as I said, it's got to be viable. It's got to be viable for the consumer. It's got to be viable for the client. Um, in the workplace and it's got to be viable for obviously the organisation that's providing it. So, so yeah, we've got this an acronym. It, it, it spells out serve, simple, elegant, relevant, viable. Serve. That's pretty it's not good. not a bad yeah. thing for a food business to, to think in, in that way, right? That's very good. And I know ISS does a lot of research into, I think you just put yourself on mute, by the way, by mistake. Um, I think you do a lot of research into workplaces. Do you see, what, do you, what kind of percentage of people do you see getting back into work? Yeah, there's lots of research out there, isn't there? Um, yeah. And we are not expecting a full return to work even next year, um, depending upon the sector. So if you're predominantly blue collar, um, yeah. then, then a much, much bigger bounce back, obviously in schools, hopefully bigger bounce back. Um, and then depending upon what you do, um, there'll be various degrees of bounce back. So we're thinking 60, maybe percent, maybe higher um, uh, into, into next year. And, and I, th I think I read a paper from, I don't know how some statistician came up with it, but eventually you can end up somewhere between 70 and 80% yeah. of, of, of occupation. And therefore it's about what happens with slightly less people that are going to attend work every day. And if it's not going to be, the work in, in the sense that we were used to, what, what, what is it going to be? And, and is it going to be more about meeting people and collaboration? So that's what we think about. And what we've realised in ISS, and actually we're rethinking our sort of core purpose as a result, um, is you've seen the pictures. London is a beautiful city, but without people, it's not the same place. And workplaces are the same. I mean, you know, you, you walk into any kind of place and without people, it's not the same place. Um, so, so, so people make places um, wherever you are. Schools are not the same places, even though they've got, you know, 10 or 15 percent of children. In. Um, but places can make people as well. So there's a reason to go to that place because you want to go there as a person. So there's a symbiotic relationship between people and places. And it's the experience that we provide when people go to those places that will make uh, those places give back something and that's really where we're we're focusing our efforts in 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 how do we conceptualize and then operationalize um, the workplace of the future and how we bring food to the center of that experience no, exactly. and there's a logic isn't there that this will help the IFM model because that's the it, traditional model is going to be under more pressure isn't it, 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 it it, it makes absolute sense, particularly if you're thinking about click and deliver or a click and collect service, or if you're spreading out the, uh, uh, the way in which you're providing services, um, the improve, the improvement in things like hygiene, um, uh, and what you're delivering multiple services in the same workplace, you have just so much flexibility, particularly if they're employed by the same organization, you can have the same strategy, same culture, same leadership team, same organization, um, uh, the same technology platforms. There's lots of reasons why actually having an integrating model can add lots more value and probably do it that little bit more efficiently and still do it as well. So yeah, it's certainly something that, that we've obviously done in ISS for many, many years um, through many organisations that we work with um, and the future may well enable us to 
add even greater value having that integrated self-delivery model that that we've we've adopted uh, over the years. No, oh, that's going to look. It's going to be a fascinating one, isn't it? So, g going back to you in terms of lockdown, how's how's it affected you? I mean, you've obviously had an intense period. Got longer hair, grayer hair. <laughs> so don't worry. Um, um, how, how's it how's it changed your the way you think about things? Um, well, certainly, I think the probably word I would describe it is you are much more appreciative of the little things that you once took for granted, whether that's you know things that you now experience at home whether that's your, your, your family whether that's nature whether that's clean air or being able to cook or uh getting fit you know all of those things that you really appreciate listening to the birds all those things they're just little things but then the things that you miss right so so those things from the office that actually you think oh no i really enjoyed that that you would have just taken for granted the the, the getting out and about in london and and, and you know, you might have been really, really busy, but there was a buzz to it, and and I, and I missed that. So, appreciation of the things that you've now been able to experience more than you'd ever done before, but also appreciation of the things that you probably won't take for granted. The things that you have not done for such a long period of time. Well, I think that's so I think a bit for me certainly, and I, I think for everybody, I think a greater appreciation, and I think that will. That level of appreciation, and we talk a lot, don't we, about sustainability and about about society, and and and, and will we just become a more appreciative society that will support well, each other and the planet at the same time? Yeah, I think that's the really interesting debate at the moment because I think there's a lot of people argue, you know, give it six months, it will be back to normal again. So it's amazing how fast we forget things. I'm not sure that's the case. I think we've actually changed fundamentally. We're creatures of habit. But this is such a deep, um, experiential, you know, time. It would be difficult, I think, for us to just to revert back. Uh, How about and I think there'll be things that we'll crave. We'll yearn for, you know, the appreciation that we've got and go, actually, no, I, I'm going to take the time to yeah. stop and just be and, and, and appreciate. And how about leadership? How's your leadership style going to change? Because it's going to be much harder, isn't it? Yeah. You're not going to get... Yeah, You're not going to see people in the same way, are you? Yeah, so it's interesting. Um, and I, I don't know whether it's just our organisation or it's others, but because of the virtual nature of the, of, of the way in which you lead an organisation, you actually become more hierarchical. So you actually, there's much more structure to the cascade of the organisation. Really? And whilst you'll do these virtual meetings, actually actually the, the instructions on, on what you need to do and how you need to do it, particularly around safety and around people and processes, has actually become much more hierarchical. I've spoken to my direct reports so much more, and you don't get those uh, informal interactions with lots of people within the team, within the workplace. So it feels much more hierarchical. But at the same time, the learning organisation has completely come to the fore because everybody is having to learn new things, new skills, everybody's having to just do things they've never ever done before and that's amazing because you're seeing this you you know in, in organizational this is not the right paradigm is it that you're hierarchical but you're a learning organization at the same time but that's what's happened and and i'm trying to get people to realize they're learning skills that they probably don't know because it's experiential learning this is stuff that they are just having to do because of the situation but actually very powerful um, what we're what we're learning right now, uh, and I mean, let's hope we keep that. Not necessarily the hierarchical bit, but the learning organisation bit. Well, look, I think that's right because I mean one of the big debates about leadership is we're going to move away from being directing to a leadership to a much more listening learning process because things are changing so fast. The actual attributes of the leader is going to, yeah. have to change as well. Yeah, you 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 can forget the idea that you're a knowledge leader because you can't know everything. Nobody does, and to pretend that you know what's going to happen is is folly. What, what you do as a leader is you provide a framework and a set of principles and values, which is you know, the serve thing I've just talked to you about, saying, look, I don't quite know where we're headed, but I think that there are some core principles upon which we play. Because we think about, well, what's, what, what's not going to change? You know, in ISS, you know, what's not going to change is we, 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 we directly employ the people and we cook fresh food and we look after our people and our customers and that won't change. We, we, you know, we're not going to, I don't think, digitise and put in a delivery solution because I don't think that's the, who we are. So you then say, okay, now we know what 
what's not going to change with loads of things changing once we know what's going to change what's the what's the playing field what are the things that we were famous for before uh lockdown that we want to accelerate what are the things that we the trends that we were working on sustainability health well-being experience that have accelerated uh during lockdown um and therefore how do we bring those things forward and then set a guiding uh, set of guiding principles uh empowering people to do these things and it's, you know I've, I've been amazed at the amount of change that we've enabled my team have done since march i mean it was just phenomenal you know what we you think you look going to look back at it and you go did we really do that you know did we really completely change our operating model in our school's business in a week you know did we really turn the sunborn hotel into a nightingale training center in a week did we really you know did we really put in brand new commercial models in pretty much every one of our contracts within two weeks or three weeks of it's, a, it's going to be amazing when you really look back and uh, the stories we'll be able to tell, I'm sure, will be oh, no, uh, stuff uh, a legend. I've got a colleague who wants, to, who wants to publish a book on the lockdown stories because that's the changes that everyone's gone through. Just yeah. Yeah. I think things like, we're still doing sales, I mean, other people talk, we're still doing sales presentations, virtual. So we were doing a whole, you know, proper pitch. And we completely reimagined the pitch because we knew we were in a virtual environment, not face to face. And where you're normally fair, I mean, I know I am, I'm fairly sort of just off the cuff. You had to make it almost like a TV production because that's the experience that you were getting from a screen rather than a, a person. Um, so it was amazing um, the things that we were, we've achieved that we would never have dreamed of. And, and now it's a case of, well, how much of this stuff do we want to keep, you know, and we're still going to do, and, and, and what things are we going to say we're glad to see the, the back of? <laughs> the Zoom meetings, probably. <laughs> that is certainly <laughs> one thing. Absolutely right. Yeah, <laughs> seeing looking, people face to face. Yeah, I'm looking forward to getting to the pub again. I have to say, I've really the, missed that. The, 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 the pub, you're absolutely right. So um, we've, we've just started to reopen our, off, our head office in Weybridge. Um, and we've got one other looming challenge coming up, Chris, is that the, the time where part of you are in an office and part of you are offline, it's going to be incredible need for improvements in technology um, sure. because it seems that when we're all working from home, we're fine. But having part and part, I think it's going to be a real challenge for organisations because it was really hard for those who were offline compared to those who were in the room. Yeah, and I think the other challenge is going to be how do you re-engage those who've been on furlough for 16, oh. 18 weeks? Yeah. Because if you've been off, how do you get the stamina oh. back to come back to operate? I, I, you know, it's, it's how do you keep you know, your kids motivated to do their schoolwork when they're, when they're sat at home with all the temptation. It's going, to be, it's going to take time. I think a lot of people will just desperately need to come back to work. And um, we want to make it safe. But I do think that there's lots of anxiety still around, but lots of a general desire to get get back to some form of normality as well um, and hopefully as we continue to see the the number of cases come down and all of the stats go in the right direction then I think our confidence will return and we'll get used to this social distanced um, arrangement and it will it will, somebody uh, in my team described when, when the first time we were getting those really horrible incidents on aeroplanes that we all then our whole airport experience completely changed didn't it and we all then had to do things in airports that we've never been used to and first of all you get used to doing it because you know it keeps you safe then you get really annoyed when it doesn't go as quickly and then you get used to it and people crack it I think we'll go through a similar probably set of experience you won't mind at first because you know it's about your safety if, it, you, if it's not right you'll experience it not being right and therefore we've got to do so very quickly make sure it is right and i think that's the phases yeah. we'll go through over the next three to six months i think i think i think it's gonna be fascinating to see how london comes back because you you just won't get those numbers in the same way and cheap and i and i miss it i miss london well, yeah. absolutely. It's, it's funny I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not missing being on a tube today. <laughs> no, it's the restaurants, isn't it? For choice. Yeah, 
Absolutely. Was, Imagine it. We need yeah. to open it up, don't we? We need to, we need more outdoor spaces available to us. Um, oh, undoubtedly. So what surprised you most about yourself in terms of your learning to do this? Um, the, I think, I think uh, the resilience, not just, not just of me, the fact that we almost took it in our stride. I think everybody I've spoken to, um, there, was, there was not the kind of sense of, if you'd said to, to us before it happened, it was going to happen, we'd have all gone into <laughs> meltdown. But the reality, of course, was that we just got on with it. Life went on as, as, as much as, you know, we had the lockdown and, and we, we just, the resilience of human beings is quite astonishing. And, um, uh, and that's something I think, not just me, you know, personally, but, but all my family and, and friends, and we all have, you know, you talk to everybody, we've all just got on with it. And um, yeah, amazing in, in a time of crisis, how, how the human nature comes good and, and that we, we, we do things that we never thought we would be able to do because we have to. Um, I think that's, yeah, look, in some ways, I've loved this period. It sounds terrible. Not the economic piece. Yeah, but exactly. I, I know of five people who started relationships while they've been in lockdown, which I found there's one who's got engaged. Um, lots of people talked about how much they've loved spending time with their families. There's been, there has been a whole completely different side to this whole thing, which has made it very difficult because you've got the economic tensions on one side and all those yeah. problems here. Yeah. And the other side, actually, people are really quite enjoying, secretly enjoying what's going on. Yeah, and there'll be some people that it just works. This, this, you know, working from home and spending much more is exactly what they want. I mean, I'm, I certainly love variety, and so there's a bit of cabin fever creeping in. We're all right at the moment, aren't we? Because we've got this lovely weather, and it's the summer. We can get out a bit more, um, but certainly I miss meeting people and and and, and going to places and seeing things and. And certainly would love that balance so that you get that big variety, um, that, that variety in life so we don't get complete cabin fever. Oh, Zoom, Zoom right. fever, we'll call it. We'll get Zoom <laughs> fever. <laughs> oh, no, no. Well, look, Mark, that's been fantastic. Thank you for your time today. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, you're very enlightening. So thank you. And, uh, yeah. Enjoy the rest Take of the care. day. See you soon, hopefully. I hope so. It'll be good.